All right. Well, um, it was my turn, so I decided to go with um, uh, kind of a. T- now, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is obviously the childhood classic, but they made a sequel because Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure was kind of like a out of nowhere success film. So at that time, you had to make a sequel. So actually, what I did was um, I because I was kind of struggling to kind of figure out what movie I said. All right, what movies have a bad Rotten Tomatoes score? yet are still considered good movies by the people who actually watched them. So I went with Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, and I got to tell you, man, I watched the whole thing, and there was no point where I was, like, disappointed that I was watching this particular movie. Now, from a movie critic standpoint, I can understand, like, as a standalone, it wouldn't work. This would not work as a standalone movie. Right. It had to exist in the world where Bill and Ted's excellent adventure existed alan have you ever seen bill and ted's bogus journey uh yes fucking ages ago i did not have time to catch up on it um and, but i remember did, did you see that it, uh did they have it on at blue jays yeah probably most likely <laughs> okay. on a very tiny little tube tv <laughs> behind the tester oven with the mama celeste <laughs> So let's see here. On Rotten Tomatoes, uh, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey gets a 56 on the thermometer and actually also gets a 56 on the audience score. But I got to tell you, man, the brilliance of the movie is, I guess, really just lays in Bill and Ted themselves. Uh, It's a testament to Alex Winter, the lesser known of the Bill and Ted's, (laughs) and Keanu Reeves, man. Like, the characters are just so good. I was actually watching it with a critical eye, and I was thinking, like, y- there's no two other actors that you could replace these characters with, and the movie would work. It's set in a um, utopian future, of course, where Bill and Ted have saved the world through their music of the uh, Wild Stallions. But there is a villain, of course. And, Wes, if I have the share, I would like to... Um... You do? Well, yeah. no, there you go. Go, go for it. Yeah. I know, but you know I'm fucking dumb here. Nope. How do I, I, you didn't. I lied. <clears throat> I just I got to you now. Well, well, how do I? You go to screen share at the bottom, hit that, uh-huh. and then it should pop up above that. <clears throat> it should give you some. There we some go. Options. I got gotcha. you. There we go. Merle All right. said to do that. Yeah. So on the left, um, and if you're just listening, you're screwed. But if you're not. And you're actually watching the video here on the left is actually the villain from Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. And um, if you notice on the right, there's another man who's a real man. His name is uh, Klaus Schwab and Klaus Schwab is actually the um, man who invented the World Economic Forum. Now, much like the gentleman to the left, who's the villain in Bill and Ted's bogus journey, he wants to uh, change the world. He's a tyrannical militant. And he wants to change society by reprogramming the social fabric, much like Klaus Schwab wants to do with the World Economic Forum. (laughs) But if you'll also notice that Klaus Schwab also has a striking resemblance to none other than Darth Vader. Another man who wants to change society by reprogramming its social fabric. Jesus. (laughs) Which I found to be very telling. Uh, You know, it, it resonates... With, with this current uh, era that we uh, that we reside in uh, right now. Yeah. So with that said, it has a very compelling storyline. It makes sense. Uh, the Klaus Schwab of the story is going to be sending two robot Bill and Ted's back to the current era to kill Bill and Ted so they can't create the music that then uh, changes the world. Again, it's a goofy movie. Yeah. It can't stand on its own. But the love of the characters drives the storyline. And they have the balls to actually kill Bill and Ted. Within the first 30 minutes, they throw Bill and Ted off a fucking cliff. I was going to say, one of my favorite uh, bits from that movie is when they beat death in games. They beat him in Twister. They beat him in, uh, was it Checkers or Chess? uh, And a few other things. That's what I was going to get to. It's clever. The stupidity of Bill and Ted adds to the appeal of the movie because death gives them this very just like, disheartening fucking bleak fucking challenge you you may challenge me but if you lose you stay in purgatory forever and then they challenge in the battleship 
yeah. then they challenge him to fucking twist her. I say it was a and two out they, of three, two out of five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they turn death into a character in and of himself. So you may a be fucking... a king or a little street sweeper, but sooner or later you have to dance with the reaper. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and death befriends them. It becomes goofy. And by that point, though, you're fully like engrossed in the storyline, no matter how stupid it is, no matter how obnoxious it is, it's dumb. And they also don't shy away from the fact that the plot is exactly the same as the first movie. It's just instead of traveling through time, they travel to heaven and hell and they go to heaven to find the people, the guys that are then going to take them back to the present to defeat their evil robot (laughs) counterparts. And of course you have, you have uh, George Carlin in there. Who's, one of my favorite comedians of all time. So I just stand with that. Yes, there. they convinced this guy who, again, was trying to reprogram society through the social fabric of their mentality. Yes, he's, yeah, yes. Rufus. He signed on for this quote unquote lame, uh, you know, extra piece to the Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. He, he was down with it. I know he needed some money, I know he owed people a few dollars here and there. But again, the movie works if you liked Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. If you didn't watch that movie, the movie makes no sense at all whatsoever. But it is a pleasurable experience. And if you haven't visited it in quite some time, I do recommend it. It is a good, bad movie. Yeah. Alan's going to watch it. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll check it out again, maybe. Probably not. (laughs) It sounds fucking terrible. I'm telling you, though, yes, Alan, it is terrible, but Bill and Ted are so good at being Bill and Ted that all of the nonsense that is the movie is kind of washed away. You're rooting for these characters, and I feel like that's what makes a good movie, is if you can root for the characters, no matter how flawed they are, no matter how idiotic they are, if you have a soft spot in your heart for what they're trying to accomplish— You'll enjoy the nonsense that surrounds them. I was just like going through some of the characters on IMDb. I came across the, was it Amy? Well, <clears throat> whatever her character was, but it's Bill, Bill's hot stepmom. <laughs> well, now it's Ted's hot stepmom. She, oh, she kept yeah. switching. Yeah. 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 In the, in the original film, she was Bill's stepmom, who they went to high school with. They were freshmen when she was a senior. Right. And then she divorces Bill's dad. And marries Ted's dad, but she's also throwing uh throwing eyes at uh, some other people. <laughs> yeah, no, sounds uh, like sounds like a humdinger. I've seen both. Of, I saw both of them in theaters. By the way, my dad liked liked it. Wow. Yeah, like the old man yeah, my dad like, liked them too. And that that I think that. And when I was a kid, you couldn't just get a movie here and there. Like movies were like. They had more weight. It's there were less of them. They were less accessible, so you had to like, and maybe that's what it is too. Is you had to enjoy them because you had no choice. <laughs> that's right. <clears throat> Spend a little money, get a little popcorn, get your hands greasy. And by that point, I think they had already made like the cartoon, so like they were fully invested in the Bill and Ted adventures. Shit. Yeah, and uh, Keanu Reeves was moving on to Point Break and. What's his face was moving on to things. <laughs> Alex Winter. Well, you got to remember he was in Lost Boys. That's right. Yeah. And Bill and yeah. Ted's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And that was Bill and that. Ted's excellent adventure. And he was also in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. And then he was in a Popeye's Chicken. I'm sure at some point. <laughs> An ad or maybe a movie. Home Depot. <laughs> 